Nebula is famous for its amazing emulations of classic studio gear, but up until now it's been very hard work for the average user to get the most out of it. Nebula uses unique and complex technology that has previously been understood by only a small number of dedicated computer audio geeks. Now, at last, this information is available for everyone in plain English. This course is not only for people who have just started using Nebula, it also covers a much wider range of subjects that need to be understood by all users to get the best out of the plugin. Nebula Explain Starter is all about getting you started properly. The course will take approximately an hour to finish. By the time you've completed it, you will understand how Nebula's brute force emulation works and what it can and can't achieve, have made basic and important changes to Nebula's default setup to get the optimum performance on your machine, have understood the difference between Nebula and Nebula Reverb versions of a plugin and know which version you should be using, be able to install and delete Nebula libraries easily, understand how Nebula's latency settings affect its sound and performance, be able to easily change GUI parameters using buttons, sliders, keyboard input and the modifier keys, be able to use the program browser, jump directly to programs and understand every parameter on the prog page, be able to save a program with a new name and change its category, and know the basics of gain staging and understanding how important it is in relation to Nebula. Nebula Explained Start is made up mostly from video, which includes screencast examples of Nebula in action, callouts, graphics and photos to highlight key points, and specially created diagrams to make sure everything is easily understood. Every lecture starts by telling you exactly what you will learn in the lecture and ends with a detailed summary. At the end of each section, there are multiple choice questions to help consolidate your learning. There is a link below to a PDF of the entire contents of the course. Starter is a cut-down version of the Nebula Explained Professional course, offered at a reduced cost. It is for those only wanting to learn the basics. If you've not done so already, please also take a look at the Nebula Explained Professional curriculum so you can decide what the right course is for you. The entire course is hosted on the best online learning platform that is, Udemy. Subscribing to the course via the official Learn Digital Audio website enables you to get a massive 50% off the Udemy price. Just click this link and enter your email. Enroll now and take your Nebula knowledge to the next level. Now, let's have a look at some of the videos so you can get a taster of the content. In this lecture, we're going to cover what exactly a Nebula library is, what a program and vector is, installing a Nebula library using libraryinstaller.exe and by hand, and deleting a Nebula library or program by hand. Nebula by itself can do nothing. Like a sampler such as Native Instruments Contact, it needs samples. This set of samples must have a description attached to tell the sampler how to use them. For example, a multi-sampled piano that you download for a sampler will have all the individual notes sampled as .wav or .aiff files, but it must also have a file to say which notes trigger which sample. The file might also say to play a certain note backwards or loop at the end. In Nebula, the description is very complex. It can control all the special functions we talked about in the previous section. It tells Nebula which controls to make available and which settings to use. In Nebula, these description files are called programs. The actual samples are vectors. A Nebula library is just a collection of Nebula programs based on one bit of sampled hardware. This is how they are usually supplied, and that is how we will refer to a library from now on. Next to the name of a program we have some cryptic numbers and letters. The number next to the title of a program is its program number. Every program in Nebula is automatically assigned a number. This is a legacy method of choosing programs which could still be of use to the numerically minded. Click it, enter a program number and hit return. You can quickly load that program without having to navigate with a program browser. A K symbol means the program is encrypted. This is the copy protection at work. A C means it's been converted from another sample rate. This is also shown by the FRT parameter. Across the top of a page we have many abbreviated parameters with data displayed next to them and buttons that perform various actions. On each touchscreen page these will change. Let's start by looking at detail on those on the prog page. We will go through every page. 
If a parameter is displayed on more than one page, I will describe it once, then miss it out on the following pages. Starting at the top, we have SMP. This is the number of samples used in the program. For more samples, generally the more complex the program. These samples might represent many different things. They could be different frequency settings on a sampled EQ, or different dynamic layers on a dynamically sampled preamp. It depends on the kind of program and the way it was sampled. It's not something the user has to worry about, but it can be an indicator of program quality if you know what to look for in the other parameters. Most of Nebula's settings can be changed from within the GUI and don't need any files to be edited. To do this, the first thing we need to do is to switch from simple to guru mode. This is done by first navigating to the master page. We can see the mode is set to zero, simple. Push the right slider up and we enter one, guru mode. Now we can access all of Nebula's controls. We will be exploring all of them in due course, so please hit the save button so Nebula will remain in this mode. The latency of a plugin is the amount of time it takes to process the incoming signal. To a point, the more time you give it to process the sound, the lower the CPU use. The latency of a door is the amount of time it takes to process the sound coming in and out of it. All doors have a built-in latency decided by the sound card driver and its settings. Plugins that have latency add to this already existing delay. We're going to load Cupwise's URI filter emulation program. The original hardware for this filter never had an envelope follower, but here Nebula's own envelope follower is used to sequence for samples taken from the original hardware. Nebula has its own internal synthesis engine that can manipulate the samples and create its own brand new effects. Here we have one of Tim Pethrick's recent phaser emulation programs. It is using Nebula's internal LFOs to move through the samples to create the phasing effect. Let's go in and make some changes deep within Nebula to get some crazy sounds. Thank you. 